And now we have Planet Terry. Now I like this one very much because uh, Planet Terry, he is, uh, I don't, is he a superhero too? I don't, I don't follow some of these characters in the comics, but uh, Planet Terry is uh, doing some kind of a, 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 a battle here. And uh, let me explain about his flaw. There's something you ever go to. We went recently, took the grandkids, Betty and I, and our daughter-in-law and, and our son, and uh, three children to Kiva Boardwalk. And they finally got, is it called the Texas Cyclone? Or what is the, the name bullet. of it? Texas Bullet? The Bullet. The Bullet. It's a roller coaster. And I'm, I'm 67 years old. And I got on that thing, and I didn't think I was going to make 68. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, just awesome. jerks you yeah, everywhere. Right. It, is, it is something else. You, you know, you go into a hard banking turn, uh, you descend, it almost it look, feels like a vertical drop. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's, you know, like 45 degrees or something like that at about 60, 70 miles per hour. But you are affected with, by something called centripetal force. And centripetal force is if I'm on a merry-go-round, I'm spinning around, and I'm holding the ball in my hand, it will pull my arm out. It's a force that as you spin, I'm getting dizzy, <laughs> it will pull, it's a force that pulls away from you. Okay, now if it was not for another one of Newton's laws, it's called the law of gravitation. And the law of gravitation is such as the farther away you get from a body with mass, the weaker the attraction becomes. So if you're very close to the mass, it's a strong attraction. I can only jump about, I play basketball. LeBron James, when I was his age, believe it or not, I could dunk the basketball. So surely, Mr. Woodfield, you couldn't have done it. Yes, I could. My was such a powerful player, I got a basketball scholarship to Rice University. Of course, in those days, Rice University was not what uh, UCLA is or anything like that. But they gave me a basketball scholarship, and I ended up my career with the lowest shooting percentage in Rice University history. I made one out of 18 shots, by the way. So, but I could dunk the ball. <laughs> and so, to get back to this point, when you get far from the earth, and you're traveling around the Earth, there's a balance between the centripetal effect and gravity. And this balance, like the roller coaster, if you weren't sitting with that bar on, you would fly out into Galveston Bay <laughs> because the centripetal force would carry you out there. You might end up in, what's that restaurant out there? Uh, one of those restaurants if you didn't have that bar around your abdomen. Okay, now what do we see here? These guys are certainly not being affected by gravity, and yet they are simply doing some kind of a fisticuff, some kind of a wrestling match, perhaps karate, jujitsu, or some kind of an Eastern uh, combative art, and no difficulty. That could be another flaw in this comic book exercise for your illustrative illustration paragraph. Now, uh, let's go to the last cover. I think we've covered them all, haven't we? We, we have. And as far as my demonstrations go, uh, let me just conclude and explain to you why it's important to know spacecraft design and know the laws and physics and so forth. The shuttle. I explained to you the fact that when Columbia launched that the wing had been penetrated by a sloughing uh, mass of insulation. So now as Columbia is gone and performed its mission and it's about to re-enter, here's the difficulty. When you have a potential failure, you ought to uh, get all the information you can about the situation. It would sort of be like writing your illustration paragraph and think, ah, it's okay, I got things down there, but I don't want to proofread. 
It's good enough. And so you probably have run-on sentences, you have sentence fragments, and so forth. Those things are death to your grave, believe me. And so it is with the space shuttle. We should have spent much more time analyzing, determining whether we had done the best job that we could have done for those astronauts. And we could have done better because there was the possibility of doing what they call an EVA, an extravehicular activity. That is, there was damage to that wing and everybody just said, well, it certainly, we've never had it happen before. We've never had insulation actually punch a hole in the wing. But if we would have sent an astronaut out and we could have and actually examined that wing, we would have found that it was a life-threatening situation that could take astronauts' lives. So some people said, well, you couldn't have saved the astronauts anyway. Like you're saying, ah, I've done enough. I've, I've gone over all my sentences enough. I think I've used spell check. Certainly, Microsoft spell check is better than anything I could ever do. You think so? It might be saying that you're there, T-H-E-I-R, should be T-H-E-R-E. -E. They're both spelled okay, but how you use the Microsoft spell check is not going to be able to determine which form you should use. So here's the thing. They did an analysis after the loss of the crew. It took months to do it. And they discovered that if they had known that there was a hole in the wing, that there was a good chance that the other shuttle Atlantis was on the launch pad and they could have cut down power, they could have used their backpacks for breathing, they could have extended the oxygen, the water, and all those consumables long enough to perform a rescue with Atlantis exactly like they rescued the crew of Apollo 13. But they assumed that there's nothing we can do don't ever assume that you can't do a better job in your, your work here. So that's pretty much my, my talk, and you guys can now begin, and I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Woodville.